we've got an oil warning light. That should now be normal mode it's going up to. Oh, that's not good news, I don't think. Yeah, our turbo was absolutely kaput, as you can see, tons of smoke here. Is the engine at least now sorted and running right? Also, no. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today I'm sat at my desk and I am trying to buy some vehicles for stock. And I've seen one that's, I don't know, I, I, I don't know what, I even know that I shouldn't be doing it, but it has piqued my interest and it would scratch an itch. Um, it's not the perfect car that I wanna buy, but it may do just to get a feeling for it. Today we are looking at G3 auctions online at Castleford and what I have seen is a 2013 Land Rover Range Rover and it's the V8 Vogue SE. This one jumped out at me because it looks like it is not an original Range Rover colour. I have to admit the other thing that grabbed my attention was the fact that it seems quite cheap for what it is but there's probably a good reason for that. Mileage, it's 110,000 miles. It looks like it doesn't have an MOT. The mileage, even at 110,000 miles, isn't warranted. Uh, it has no service history. It doesn't have an assured report. And the more I go on, the more I'm questioning my own sanity. And I also think it's been wrapped, which could be hiding all kinds of problems. But, you know, it could also be completely innocent and be a complete gem. So let's take a look at what we're talking about. Here it is, it looks like it's in this kind of, I think it's a satin. Uh, is that, probably that's Nardo Grey, isn't it? Very popular. It does look like it's been done quite well and it would look smart. I think the wheels want refurbishing, but it does look smart. I'm sometimes torn with wrapped cars because on something like this, I mean, I think it does look smart, but if it's clearly a wrap, then it can look a bit rubbish, can't it? It just looks a bit posy, a little bit too try hard, but you know, if we can get it at the right price, um, it would be a cheap way into trying one of these. As a lot of you will know, I bought a Range Rover Sport for my dad recently because he wanted to upgrade from his Range Rover L322 to something a bit more modern. He thought the Sport was what he wanted, so we got him one of those, but now he thinks that it's a bit firm. It, the, the Sport in the name of the vehicle didn't give it away. So what he actually wants now is a full fat Range Rover. Uh, he's hoping that will be more comfortable but time will tell when we get one and he can try it. Now, he wants one that's a bit lower mileage than this, and he probably won't want one that's wrapped. But two things. One, it will give him an idea of what they're like and whether he really wants one. And secondly, once my dad gets into something and he likes it, he'll probably just have it anyway. If not, I feel like if I get this cheap enough and it's not a complete nail, I'd quite like to drive around with it. On the whole, it actually looks pretty decent. So let's have a look inside and see what the interior say. Fairly plain black leather interior. Um, we don't get to see in the back, sadly, so we can't see whether it's got TVs in the headrest or anything, but it looks pretty decent in there. Um, let's go to the condition one. So we've got a broken seat trim here where all the electrics and everything go. Hopefully the seat still works, but I can't be too much of a thing to fix, can it? It looks actually like it's exactly the same piece of trim that you get on a Sport. And we did have those carbon fiber one. Now they'd look crap, wouldn't they? But either way, I'm sure we can get a part to fix that. Wheels are curbed and by the looks of it, actually quite sort of corroded and scabby. So it's gonna want a wheel refurb for sure. Looking at where it's actually wrapped as the arches, it actually looks okay. I can't see any signs of it peeling off, which is what I'd wanna know about. Because I guess once it starts coming off, you've got to take the whole thing off. You're never gonna match it, are you? Oh, the tires, maybe it shows us a tire because that is perish to high hell. It is a Pirelli, but you can barely tell because it's practically worn the badge off. These are the more worrying things. We've got an oil light, which could be minor, could be major. And we've got an ASL light. I don't even know what that means, but I think it'd be something to do with wheel speed sensor or something. Is it something to do with traction control, stability control, stuff like that? Like I say, Pricing looks very good on this because cap clean is £10,500, cap retail being £13,000. But having done the research, and as we've talked about before when it comes to Range Rover stuff, I think Auto Trader will have something different to say. So I've plugged it in on Auto Trader. This is on 
dealer, this is on Portal, so Auto Trader Portal. A lot of people have asked me about this before, like, oh, how do I get that kind of retail rating from Auto Trader? You can't unless you advertise with Auto Trader and you pay for X amount per month and you have this as part of the package. Interestingly, this is 30 out of 100, which is a lot more than a Range Rover, full fat Range Rover normally is. They're normally like two or three, because I've been looking at them quite a lot recently and they're normally just as desirable as like a bad case of gonorrhea. No one seems to want them for some reason and everyone's pricing them really low, but maybe because this one's older, it's got the 4.4, which is more desirable than the three liter. Maybe that helps it, I don't know. But it's saying the retail valuation is 15,700 pounds with a part exchange valuation of nine grand. So it's obviously worth a lot more than cap think. And I think we could have a decent margin out of it. We're gonna to want to have a decent margin out of it. So for me, I'm gonna to want to have at least five grand in this. In worst case scenario, I wanna be able to cover myself <clears throat> should there be big problems with this. You know, put a whole new engine in it for four grand maybe. And I might not make money, but I won't be losing money like crazy. So if we wanted a 5,000 pound margin, our maximum to bid would be 10,700 pounds. And what have I put on my little list here? I have put down that I am going to bid 9,000 pounds maximum, which I think is brave anyway, but that would give us a six and a half grand margin. 9,000, six and a half, well actually it's 6,750, including our 250 pounds of costs, which we're gonna eat up in a matter of seconds probably with some center caps for this thing. This will be a gamble for sure if we go for it, but we'll see what happens. Sometimes I get a bit carried away when it actually goes through the hall. Some other people start bidding on it and I think, mm, especially if they're in the hall, they must see something that I don't see, so I want to have it. <sighs> Wish me luck. I'll see you when this goes through the auction hall. Average on the car, body wrap as well. 85, 85, 85 with a bit of 85, 85. 85 the Interesting, we'll have to see what happens with that. I don't know if that was a good choice or not, but I will update you as soon as we find out whether we've actually got that on the provisional or not. They might ask for more money, but I'm definitely not giving any more. Just because of those few things that could be a bit iffy. I'll be back soon, let you know what's happening. Right, it is the following week, in fact the following Monday, and our Range Rover Sport, the wrapped Range Rover Sport, has arrived. And from first impressions, it actually doesn't look that bad. But obviously we know we've got a few issues we're gonna have to look at with this thing. So uh, let's dive into it and check this thing out. There it is, look at that thing in all of its battleship gray glory. Actually doesn't look that bad. It's very much the same sort of color that we did the BMW 730D that we had. It just, I mean, I think this is meant to be Nardo gray, I would say but it does just look like primer gray. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna hate it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't dislike it. I think once the wheels are done, you know, refreshed and maybe, I think with silver wheels or like a dark gray would look better than these black wheels. I don't know. It does, it's nice that it's a nice contrast between this gloss black on these fins and the bodywork. You can start to see some of the wrap peeling there but generally and there actually so I guess if you look for it you will find it but on the whole I don't think it looks too bad I feel like this is sitting down low on the back again but then I say that about every kind of Range Rover I ever look at so maybe that's just how they are and I just expect them to look different but for what we paid this looks like quite an impressive motor to be honest alloy wheels as we saw look pretty scabby that's going to want sorting out so we're definitely going to want a wheel refurb on this that's okay because that gives us the option to do a different color should we think it would work better which i think it would i mean the wrap looks like it's been done pretty well to be honest it's nice and neat this is the places where you expect to see like horrible stuff but actually really decent quality and there's not there are a couple of nicks in it but nothing too bad 
I wonder if it was owned by another trader because it's got these We Buy Cars for More limited number plates on. They're not like brand new, so they haven't just bought it and then sent it to auction. Maybe it was owned by uh, another trader. If it has, it's worrying that it's at auction, I guess, especially with a few engine lights on, but we'll find out. This is probably the worst of the alloy wheels. The lacquer is just coming off. Oh yeah, look at that. Satisfying. A lot of that will jet wash off, but we're gonna have to get them refurbed anyway, so. Can't tell if we've got side steps on this. I don't think we do. We might have to get a little touch up pen of Nardo gray there, touch that in. But that I think is actually about the worst of any damage on this wrap, so not bad at all. Let's have a look, we've still got our, oh, I can't have come from We Buy What's It Cars cheaply because it was a noodle one. We are, oh, we are out of MIT in four days time. That's bad news. How many keys have we got? No service history. I think we've only got the one, oh, we have got two keys. I've only got one in my hand, so the other one will be somewhere with whatever paperwork it is we've got. Or having just moved this around, it wouldn't, it wouldn't lock. Maybe that's because there's still a key inside. So let's have a look inside. We'll see what this car was originally. Well, in fact, we can probably see it there. Look. Actually a very nice black. So this would be, this is the, this is the thing. A lot of people is, are gonna be put off by this wrap on here. Some people will love it. But underneath is a gloss black metallic paint job. Hopefully it's in good condition. If it was, Black on everything would look quite smart, but yeah, tough one to decide. Here we are, look, here is the black. How well that'll come out on camera, I don't know, but it's got a really, really nice flake in there. Nice thing is that being black, it doesn't stand out. A lot of cars, when they've been wrapped from one color to another and it's really polar opposite, it just looks rubbish when you get in the door shuts. This actually looks okay. We've got our broken seat thing here, which I'm sure we can do something with. Still operates the seat, at least. What does that do? Oh, that pushes the seat base in and out. That's interesting. And some other buttons for other stuff. I honestly don't know. We've got the nice big LED screen. In the middle there is a note, which I won't show too closely because that shows how the Ghost immobilizer works, which this car has fitted. And one of those things you've got to remember how to do it when you get in, it's a bit annoying. We might try and find out what brand it is and whether we could like pause it or put it in service mode, because, you know. Uh, I suppose, I mean, it's, it's not bad news, is it, for every one of these? It certainly helped with insurance, I imagine, because they are quite nickable. Nice pan roof, it's a really good spec. We've got the heated leather seats. I don't know if they're heated and cooled as well. Won't know till we get in and fire it up, to be honest. We've got the rear privacy glass, adjustable seats in the back. No TVs in the back, unfortunately, but we do have heated seats. Oh, we've got heated and cooled seats in the back, as well as a, another dual climate control type thing. We've got the HSE style fancy armrest, but that cubby hole doesn't seem to want to open. At least not. Oh, there we go. Just about, but I think the spring loaded thing may be a bit, a bit weak. Ah, that's if you're a passenger in here and you want more leg room, you can push the passenger seat forward. I imagine that won't be on the driver's seat because that would be daft, wouldn't it? You'd have to be pretty ignorant to uh, start pushing your driver forward as you're moving along. But yeah, it's quite nice in here. It's a bit bland that it's just black. Black headlining, which is quite nice. Got our Meridian sounds. And we've got piano, black inserts and everything as well, which it's certainly not a bad interior to have. Quite neutral, really. Let's have a quick look in the boot and let's also see if our power boot works. Oh, it's a two-piece one. See, I've not had one of these Range Rovers of this generation before. It's actually quite, has that power as well? Yep. Everything's power for you, I guess. Oh, is that a full-size? Looks like we've got a full-size alloy wheel in there as well. Looks in pretty good condition in the back, to be honest. We've still got our parcel shelf as well. Which still works. Oh, does it? Can get it yeah still works the same as like the l322 l322 yeah does you kind of pivot it up and slide it over so that's good news does that go back up yes it does look at that 
I'll tell you one thing I want to check. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting what happens with the engine with this because I have been after a cheap Range Rover. So has my dad. I feel like if my dad spots this, he'll want it, especially, I know it's too high mileage for what he wanted. It doesn't bother me so much because I'm probably going to end up putting miles on it, towing with it anyway. It's quite expensive to put a tow bar on these, but some of these do come with a fold out tow bar. And I hadn't noticed, but it does look like this one does. So what I've been trying to look out for in the pictures is this set of switches on the right hand side of the boot here. So it looks like we can A, fold those seats down. So you can just power them down as much as you want. Okay, and then power them back up again, which is a very handy feature. But we've also got what looks like a power tow bar on this as well. When I first spotted it, I saw that that plate in there, the kind of like bit that would cover your electrics, if you had them, looked like a slightly different color. So with these, I think you have to press on the power button, then that will come on for there. Look at that. That is pretty neat. Now, it hasn't been used much. That's going to want to tidy that up a bit. It's got quite a lot of surface corrosion on it, but the fact that you've got a tow bar on there, but then you can also just fold it away really easily is a massive selling point of this car. For me personally, and I know it will be for my dad as well, because he's always towing random stuff around. And he wants to tow stuff for us as well, because he likes to be helpful, because he's a lovely man. So, we'll hide our ghost alarm thing. We've got a fridge as well. So that's our fridge in there. Newcastle Airport parking ticket and someone's snotty tissue. Yeah, trying to figure out what else we've got. Let's have a look at our glove box. Got someone's cocktail stick. Quick start guide, warranty. No, nothing much in there. And we've got top glove box as well. Which doesn't, oh. Nice. Winner, sugar donut. Winner, hash brown. Winner, porridge. These people obviously liked the McDonald's. Liked winning. Oh, they went out of date last year. That's a shame. And we've got some kind of Japanese soup spoon as well. As well as some chopsticks and a straw. So, always good to have. All that shut again? Ah, uh, could be because I've got that. There we go. Let's pop the bonnet, have a look under there. And then we'll fire this thing up, see how many warnings we got. Right, here we are. This is our 4.4 TD V8. I have owned one of these before, very briefly. That nice Range Rover Sport had one of these in it that we sold. That was the one that my dad wanted originally and it just kind of sold like overnight. I guess this is the one you want. I think it's like a Ford based engine and they're meant to be one of the more reliable ones. Of course, they've got absolutely tons of power and talk when it comes to towing. So we'll look at all our kind of wrap things. So it is a good quality wrap. Be interesting to know where that was done, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, cautiously optimistic so far. So, uh, right, yes, I'm gonna have to do my uh, ghost immobilizer thing. So, no, that wasn't right. Oh, yes it was. Okay, so does our power, Oh, it is an opening sunroof as well, I think. Yeah, look at that. <whistles> See, it's quite nice spec on this. I am very tempted. I mean, depending on how bad these potential engine problems are. Uh, does our blind work? Yes, it does, it would seem. Air conditioning is freezing cold, that's good. Rear windows, front windows, power fold mirrors. Oh, we're leveling out. Is that the power fold? Oh no, I'm pressing a button for, there we go. I was pressing this button, which I keep getting fused in Range Rovers, but that's for it to drop the mirror when you reverse. It thinks, oh no, it has updated now. That's interesting. It's saying Lynx Gardens burn them on sea now, but a minute ago it said like, something about Brussels. Let's have a look at what cameras have we got. We've got 360. It's interesting. So left and right cam junction view cameras aren't working. So maybe a fault there. OK, 
Okay, reverse camera works. That's good. Home. Let's see what the nav is like. Oh, we've got the two screen thing here as well. Oh, that's quite a nice display actually. So, that's that button there, which is like the two screen. So we've got DVD, CD. Let's try a digital TV. If this has TV, my dad's going to be all over it. Channel list. Oh yeah, we do. There we are, look. IT, oh no, that's, that's TV. That's actually quite a nice display as well. So, if I put that into drive now. Oh, it's still letting me watch. That's interesting. I don't think it should. Normally you would have like a view from this side and not from that side, but there we are. Look at that Spitfire takeoff. Someone may have modified this to do that. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah, that's quite cool. Anyway, so let's have a look at our warnings on the dashboard of this thing. We've got an oil warning light, seatbelt warning light, that's nothing to worry about. Smart key battery low, so let's have a look on the controls here. Uh, and it's telling us fuel as well. So, so far, it seems like the only fault is that there's an oil pressure problem. Let's have a look, does it tell us? Service menu seems to be blocked out. Don't know. We've got typically gunky Range Rover buttons, especially the ones on that over there. They're gonna need sorting out, but I've got to tell you, on the whole, I'm liking this thing. This is surprising me. I'm gonna pop the window down, and then I'm gonna reach in and do all the air suspension, God, that's sticky, uh, adjustments, and make sure that it does actually go up and down as it should. We don't have side steps. That's, uh, that's one thing that will put my dad off, because he, he has to have those. So, currently it says we're in access mode, which is low, like this. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put you over here. That should now be normal mode it's going up to. Oh, that's not good news, I don't think. Why did it do that? Is it just that it's got a low battery? It's cut out. I wonder if, I wonder how this air pump's driven. Seems to be asking that for, let's give it some revs. We are moving, we are going up, but I think the air pump or something. Is it belt driven? I didn't realise they were belt driven. I thought they were just electric, but they could be. Maybe it's got... That to me sounds like a clutch on say like an aircon motor or something, but maybe it's got a belt driven air pump. I don't know. Someone in the comments will know. If we go down, it should be fine because it's just letting air out. Good news is airbags seem okay. And it's going up again okay this time. That's a bit odd. We'll have to uh, check that out. We'll be back momentarily to let you know A, what's wrong with it, and B, show you how clean it's looking now. So, as some of you may have already guessed, that weird noise wasn't actually the air compressor pump. It was the turbo, as the guys found out as they were taking it down the farm where we waited a few weeks for there to be space available at Causeway 4x4 for them to look at it. So, yeah, our turbo was absolutely kaput. As you can see, tons of smoke here, upsetting all the locals. And we had to have a whole new turbo fitted at Causeway 4x4 at the cost of two and a half grand. Right, so here we are then with the cheap wrapped Range Rover. It's been cleaned, it's much cleaner inside, but it has got dirty again. At this point, is the car 100% finished? No, it's not. But is the engine at least now sorted and running right? Also, no. Um, unfortunately, it's gone into restricted mode or restricted performance mode again after having had the turbo changed and 
they did tell us that the airbags are going to want replacing um, but having driven it now it's basically like driving on the bump stops so we definitely need airbags on the back that's about 500 pounds for the parts possibly get some cheaper second-hand ones but um, I'm more concerned about what's going on with the engine to be fair it drove absolutely spot on they put the new turbo on when I took it home for a kind of test drive and I really put my foot down well not really put my foot down but put my foot down a bit harder absolute clouds of smoke came out of this thing but you kind of expect that of a new turbo they would have lubricated it put some oil in there so it's not the end of the world it's it's clean running when it's idling away but it did put me into a limp mode and I was doing about 10 miles an hour trying to go around like a motorway roundabout, uh, which was quite frustrating. It was a, a, it was a difficult commute back into work, I have to say. A lot of you won't be surprised, will you? But I do want to find out what's going on with it. Does it have other problems now or what the situation is? Because what's happening with this engine is really going to determine what happens with this car, because I think it's actually cleaned up quite well. But if we're gonna have problems with it, then I don't know how much more money is worth throwing at it. So let's hop in, we'll plug in, we'll find out what's going on with it. Right, last time we were getting on a Range Rover and we were using a diagnostic kit, it was the Top Don Top Scan. And I've got you that offer again, so you can get it for 40 pounds. I know some of you are upset. You went to click on the link and they didn't have any more. But what we're gonna to use today is the Car Pal. This one is even cheaper. These start off at 40 pounds. If you stick around to the end of this advert, I will show you how you can get them for just 32 pounds. What you get is a tiny little dongle. We're gonna connect that into our OBD2 port. We're gonna use the app on my phone. And when you sign up, you'll get a choice of three different manufacturers of which you can use. So I've chosen Land Rover, Audi, and BMW. We're gonna plug this in and we're gonna read some of the codes we've got. Right, here we are in our Car Pal app. I'm gonna do a full vehicle health check it's now we're going to scan the car says it can take one to three minutes all right we're going to do an auto scan it's actually doing a very very thorough check and i'm slightly terrified about just how many faults it's finding so far right that is it done our car it gives us a score 81 for vehicle health diagnostics your vehicle has fault codes please generate a diagnostics report so let's do that confirm save do you know what I'm going to try and do? I'm going to print it. Right, I've got our printed report, which is actually quite a neat little document. Quite a handy bit of kit, that, especially as you can airdrop it to your printer. We've got quite a few faults, has to be said. So power control module, let's have a quick look at that. Um, Turbocharger, boost control, solenoid B, circuit range performance. Okay, so it could just be a sensor or something. Something to do with all-terrain control module says battery voltage. It says that's a severe fault. Uh, safety belt pretensioner. High speed canvas communication. Driver's door module. All right, I think a lot of these actually just relate to, I mean, they do go on and on relate to battery voltage and i think we did put a new battery in this i can't remember now because it has been a couple of months did we put a new battery in and therefore maybe they just need redoing and maybe there's an issue with the turbo i think we're going to have to get this back to causeway and say look it's gone into limp mode i don't really want to risk it especially with a brand new turbo but actually i don't think it's necessarily quite as bad as i first thought it might have been i guess that is the beauty of having a very neat and handy little diagnostics tool like the car pal for just 32 pounds check the link in the description and you will get that discount making the car pal just 32 pounds the top scan just 40 pounds and there are a host of other things in there as well including the jump packs that we use literally daily here at barra motors get you a really good deal and i generally mean this get in there get them bought don't hang around don't leave it till next week the offer's only on for a week and the last time we did the top scan they sold out and people were giving me grief that they'd sold out too quickly so i would hop straight on it What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that report in here and I think we'll get it dropped back to Causeway just for them to be able to check it out for us and make sure they're happy that it is all to do with the turbo. And then other than a couple of niggling little issues, it's not too bad actually, I don't think. I originally, when I bought this, I thought, as I said, I wanted to scratch an itch. Do I want a 4.4 V8 Range Rover for myself? Ignore the wheels. 
we're gonna need to get those redone as well. And I did wonder about taking the wrap off. I think we'll get it mechanically sorted first. I thought we'd just cut this video here because, well, I didn't know how bad it was gonna to be, to be honest, how terminal it would be. Part of me quite likes this wrap, but then part of me quite wants to see what's going on underneath, but it is a bit of a risk, isn't it? Because it looks like it should be quite a nice black under there. Would that be a nicer look? Would I just be asking for trouble? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you think, A, I should de-wrap it? Do you think I should try using it for my own car? Or I'm in the market for something for myself and I'm quite tempted by something like this. I might have seen something else for next week now, so I don't know. If we get this all running mechanically right, which, I mean, we will, we've got no choice, we might even raffle it off. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. That is it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget feel good competitions. Don't forget the top down discount code, all that good stuff. And don't forget to make sure you're subscribed so you see when I give you an update on what's happening with this Range Rover. I'll see you then.